Hi everybody, welcome back. I had so much to say yesterday, but my grandson threatened to take my phone, etc. So the day went off peacefully, my daughter prepared a lovely lunch, and my grandson baked a cake, <laughs> which we enjoyed while I opened my gifts. With a full tummy, I heated my brand new slippers or socks, <laughs> I don't know what one should call them, and had a lovely afternoon nap. An absolute luxury in my home. Of course, the first thing I have a mouthful to talk about is Harry giving a keynote speech to Mark Nelson Mandela Day in New York. Oh, and don't forget that his wife will be by his side, hanging onto his hand and stapled to his butt. Now, people come at me and say, oh, so what? The United Nations is not in session yet. It will only be a small or limited group, blah, blah, blah. No, stop making excuses for the Harkel, the Royals and everybody else. What is right is right and what is wrong is wrong. It is in the murky grey areas where we are all currently getting lost. Besides, who cares who is in the audience? What I do care about is the fact that his speech will be broadcast here in South Africa and we'll likely see parts of it on the internet everywhere. Now, firstly, as a South African, I am offended by the mere fact that Harry was chosen to give the speech in the first place. For goodness sake, there are great actors like Sidney Poitier and Morgan Freeman who played Mr. Mandela in movies. Now, okay, Sidney Poitier passed away January this year, but Morgan Freeman is still very much alive. The Obamas met and spent time with Mr. Mandela. Charlize Theron, an A-list actress and South African-born, would be a better option. She met and spent time with Mr. Mandela as well. Even Oprah, whom I'm not a particular fan of, would have been a better option. Or what about Annie Lennox, who for years supported the Nelson Mandela Foundation and Children's Fund? Compare any of them with has been. What connection does he have with Mr. Mandela or even South Africa? Nothing. Yes, his mother met Nelson Mandela. Yes, the Queen and Mr. Mandela got along very well. But his mother is dead and Harry himself is no longer a royal. And let's not forget Harry's own past referring to a fellow soldier as a pucky and another as a raghead. And why forget about that infamous Nazi uniform Harry wore to a party? Does the fact that Prince Charles spent approximately $433,000 on a trip to attend Mr. Mandela's funeral in 2013 suddenly qualify Harry to open his mouth in a speech televised to the people of South Africa. Harry and Meghan met Mr. Mandela's second wife, Grasa Marshall, during their visit to South Africa in 2019 and his granddaughter during a tribute exhibition in London in 2018. But does that qualify him to give that speech? I don't think so. Does the fact that his narcissistic ex-actress of a wife has a drop of African blood in her qualify him? The same wife who came to this country and disrespected the people time and time again out of pure ignorance and because of her stinking superiority complex. First, she spoke to people, mostly women, calling them sisters. How fake 
and how presumptuous when those women were mostly poor and abused or previously abused and who likely when she left were those expensive vehicles which were shipped in or flown in for them by Land Rover, those women likely walked home or took a cramped taxi back to their homes. The wife who would not even wear her engagement ring here in my country because she was too afraid that she would be attacked and it would be stolen off her finger when she had more security and press surrounding her than fans coming to see her. Yes, that is what she thought of us South Africans who, without security, wear our engagement or wedding rings or whatever jewellery we wish on a daily basis. A woman who could not even dress appropriately when visiting a memorial site for a young woman who was raped and murdered. Now instead, she arrived with a bunch of photographers and a top more appropriate for a visit to the beach. Yes, my dears, the same Meghan Markle who thought women in South Africa are still living in the slave era and that it is our culture to sit on the floor during visits either from friends or dignitaries. The rich woman who thought it is okay to bring a bag of second-hand baby clothing as a gift during an official visit as again according to her that is how you treat slaves or those lower than you. And to top it all off, both Meghan and Harry thought it was okay to use an official visit to my country for their pity fest. No one ever asks me whether I'm okay, being the infamous quote Meghan Markle left us South Africans with. And Harry? <laughs> I do not forget about him complaining about how hard his life is and how the clicks of a camera triggers his anxiety. But worse than that, remember him saying he would love to live in Africa, but where? There is no place for them, inferring that it is too dangerous for them. When millions of people live in this country without security in medium and low cost areas, we're not even talking about upmarket areas where some of the homes, particularly around Cape Town, will put some of their palaces to shame and where there is security in abundance because those people can afford it. To this day, I am still resentful about the opening scenes of that particular documentary. What a disgusting misrepresentation of South Africa. So people, come at me and say, Oh, but Harry has a long connection with South Africa. No, he doesn't. He has a connection to Botswana and Lesotho, which are two completely different countries. And no, Chelsea Davy was born in Zimbabwe, where her father had been one of the biggest private landowners for many years. To make matters even worse, the tagline for this year's Nelson Mandela Day is Do what you can with what you have where you are. Yes, right. <laughs> like that applies to Harry. All his life he had everything done for him wherever he was. And now, since he left the royal family, he has achieved absolutely nothing except to shoot his mouth off at the most inappropriate times. 
Harry Windsor or Harry Wales, whatever you wish to call him, envisions absolutely nothing of the standards, values, morals, perseverance, intellect attributed to Mr. Nelson Mandela. So what is this all about? And how did it come about? Did they donate something somewhere to make this possible? Or did Sunshine Sachs pay someone on their behalf to appear at this special summit or special day? Or did Prince Charles use his influence to get Harry through the door in yet another bid to try and polish Harry's image? Well, folks, suffice it to say that I, for one, do not want to see Harry's face on our television screens celebrating anything to do with South Africa or Mr. Mandela when he cannot even enjoy, respect or celebrate anything to do with Britain or his grandmother, the most gracious queen, with our drama and negativity. Actually, it is true that Mr. Mandela and the Queen liked and respected one another. And I am practically sure that Mr. Mandela will turn in his grave seeing how Harry disrespects his grandmother, Queen Elizabeth II. So no, my dears, under no circumstances do I think it is appropriate for Harry Wales or Harry Windsor or Harry Montecito, whatever you want to call him, to come and give a keynote speech on Mandela Day. So I did my part. I send an email to the United Nations and I send an email to the Mandela family. Whether anything will come off it, I don't know, but at least I did my part. Okay, guys and girls, we are suffering from long power outages again today. So I need to finish this video, get it up and loaded before the power goes out once again. So I'll keep it short until we meet again on the next one. Please take good care of yourselves. Bye.